And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and I really enjoy courtroom dramas. I don't know what it is. I like the whole objection and uh, you're under contempt. And I, I mean, I know that in actual court case, and I've been in a few, they're much more boring than the ones on TV shows. But I kind of, I just, I like the process. I even like the process of persuading jurors that your person is guilty slash innocent. And that's what this game does. When I first heard about it, I was really excited about the theme. Lawyer Up is a two-player game in which one person is playing the prosecution, the other person is playing the defendant, and you are arguing back and forth to convince a jury that, you're, that the person is guilty or innocent. Now, this is not a one-and-done shut thing. If, what I mean by that, there are two cases in here, one about forging art, another about murder, and it's not as the person committed murder or they didn't commit murder and you got to figure it out. It may have happened either way. The games can be played over and over and over again. You are simply trying to persuade people that your person did it with clever card play. Let me show you. game you're going to be playing one case and there are two cases included with the game and essentially they have different cards and different rules but you're you're playing them the same sort of way and there's expansions and things that you can add but you can play each case multiple times what you're often doing in a case most of the time is you are trying to influence a pool of jurors so there are six jurors who are predisposed to believe the prosecution and six on the defense you put a token here to show which one they are and for example at the end of case zero uh, you want to have more of them towards your side whether your defense or prosecution it starts dead even but you'll move them the tokens are put out randomly so different uh, jurors are can you know different things matter more to them some matter more about they want to see justice served some really care about evidence they have different things that they care about and they also have a number here the larger the number the harder it is to sway them when you pick a case, so the first one, case 00, the art of the crime, it's about an uh, art forger here, and it talks about it. It gives a background story. And then you can pick whether to play a short game, a normal game. Here, there's two different normal games, and a long game. In each of these, it will tell you what witnesses you're going to start with, what there, any special rules are, and then it will tell you what cards to include. There are cards that come for each case. So these are cards that come for case zero, but there's also a whole bunch of other cards for case zero that show this paintbrush, and this one here shows a web, and you might add these cards to the deck. It's gonna make it a longer game by having more cards. As it is, you're gonna be shuffling these cards here that come with the case based on which one you pick. And then players are gonna split the cards. It is the discovery phase. It's the beginning of every game. You'll draw three cards from the deck. You're gonna put one in the prosecution pile, one in the defense pile, and one under suppressed evidence. So you'll pick, so if I'm the prosecutor, I might want this one, and I'll give this one to the defense bureaucratic reports, and I'll toss this generous donations because that's one that might help the defense more. And you'll keep going through each player will draw three until you have three piles. Then the pile that you have, you're going to shuffle with a deck that you always have. So this is the prosecution deck. They're always going to use this deck. You'll add the cards that were you picked and that the defense player picked, shuffle them together, and it will give you your deck that you're going to use over the course of the game. You also have a judge. This, the judge here tends to be leaning towards the prosecution, but they'll flip multiple times over the course of the game. This is an unbiased judge, but you're gonna have biased judges who really care about one thing in particular, and that affects the rules of the game. But you can just play with a normal unbiased judge. Then you have some witnesses. Now witnesses are essentially rounds in this game. And so, again, the case will tell you which witnesses you'll bring. Some are for the prosecution, some are for the defense. One player is going to start the game. You're going to shuffle your decks and get ready. And they're going to pick a witness and put that between the players. And you're going to turn the turn it in different ways. You're going to pick which side you want to be towards you. Obviously, you're going to pick the one that has the higher number, usually, and point it towards you. And the other one will be pointing towards the other player. 
Each player has a dial here where they're going to keep track of how much influence they have with the current witness. This witness has been called. You're going to be examining and cross-examining them. So I'm going to start here, for example, I made this face me. I'm going to start with two influence on that particular witness. Then players are going to take turns going back and forth in the questioning phase. Players are going to have a handful of cards and one of the things that you can do is you can play a card on your side. Now when you play a card on your side you have to match at least one of the symbols there. That's why the symbols are there. Each of the symbols stands for various things. So you can see here I'm able to match the two brains. In this case logic matches logic. And then in the future, when I play a card, it has to match a symbol on the previous card played. So if I played this one here, you can see that the two skulls match. And then I couldn't play this one next because none of the symbols match. When you play a card, you are going to also look at the bottom of the card. The top of the card is going to add influence to your side if it's your color, prosecutor, defender, or if it is neutral, like this one here. You'll add that to your side. But also when you play it, if it says examine, you get to do whatever it says in the bottom. This one says sway one bias. Besides playing cards, you can also play a card. This procedure, for example, adds no points, but it has every symbol. So that might be worth playing on the witness, but I can also play it separately. It's a procedure card. I'm kind of gearing it up to be able to play the action on the card. So I put it into play, putting a procedure card into play. Later on, as another action, I can activate the procedure, but I can only do that if I have the judge's favor. In that case, I do whatever it says here. If you have the judge's favor and the top card in my opponent's examination is evidence, discard it. Then I lose the judge's favor. The favor goes to the other side, in this case a defense, and discard this card. So procedures are special things that you can do over the course of the trial, but you have to play them first and then discard them. Players also can use their sidebar. There's a sidebar token here that you use. You can flip that on your turn and you'll draw one more card from your deck and you get the judge's favor. This token can be used more than once over the course of the game, but you don't get it back unless you lose the witness. If you're the person who lost the witness, then you'll refresh this token. Players also can use their objection tokens. Each objection token can be used only once over the course of the game, and it can be used to cancel an opponent's argument card. You can't use them to, to cancel evidence or procedure cards, but if your opponent plays an argument card you don't like, you can object, but you can only object once per witness and only three times over the course of the game. Players can also pass, and when both players have passed, once you pass, you can't play anymore, then you're going to resolve the witness. At that point, you'll see who, how much influence each of the players have, and whoever has more wins the witness. If there's a tie, whoever has the judge's favor wins the witness. That person collects the witness, takes the witness in front of them, and you'll resolve victory and defeat things. So if there's a card on top here, so for example, this is a crime and punishment argument. This says if I win, I lose all my influence. Or this one says if I win, I draw a painting. There's great painting cards in the deck from either player's examination. But you only get that if it's a top. While the witness might often have one, here she says, sway one logic person. Swaying is going to happen a lot in this game, so swaying logic, I might, if I'm the defense and I won, I'll sway it one towards my side. If I'm the prosecution, I might sway it even farther to the other spot to get it. And who, so when you win most of the witnesses, you're going to be able to sway a bias. But you can do even more than that depending on how much you beat your opponent. You're going to, the winner will subtract the loser's uh, influence from their influence. And so let's say the leftover amount is seven. You can then spend that to sway jurors up there. So you can sway jurors here. So let's say I have seven. I can pick this six one and sway them to my side. But if I only had a difference of three, I might pick one of the lower ones. The people with lower numbers are easier to sway. Remember, you're trying to sway people to your side, and in fact, in, for example, in case zero, if they're all swayed to your side, you win. Otherwise, you're going to pull a new witness out, call a new witness, do whatever it says in the called part, and start the whole process again, drawing another hand of cards and going through it. When all the witnesses are called, the game is over, or when players' decks run out, the game is over, or if someone gets all of these. That's how you win in the first case. There's slightly different rules in the second one, including where the prosecution can lock the bias of some of the witnesses. But that's basically how you play.
there's a lot of text on the cards that is a background text, and I like that. It talks about forgeries in the first one and paintings and things. I like the pictures. It works well, and I found the symbols and the colors and everything. It's pretty well done. I didn't have to look in the rule book to see what everything was. So there's just a lot of stuff here, a lot of different cards, but they're pretty easy, especially in the beginning of the game where you're picking cards and deciding where you're going to draft them. And I'm like, oh, I don't know where to put them. But I think everything fits in really well. They did a good job. The card quality is nice. And I like how the cards match on the sides here like this. It works really well. And everything fits in the box with nice dividers in between the different cases. I might complain about these wheels. I think they spin a little too easily. They're almost, you know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be able to spin it like that. Uh, that's my only problem with components. I really also like these jurors. I guess, I mean, I know that the box needs to be small. I wouldn't have minded if this was a board, you know, with all the different tokens on the cards. But still, for everything involved, I'm very impressed with the components. Folks, I'm always looking for something new and different and the themes that feel interesting and unique. And Lawyer Up is definitely in that grouping. I was predisposed to liking this because how many games do this? Not many. There's a few, but not many. And I was really excited to try this one out. And I'm happy to say it plays really well. Now, it is a little looser on the theme than I, I, I thought. Be, it's essentially play cards on top of each other, cancel cards and things like that. And sometimes I got more involved in the mechanisms that I forgot about the theme. But the theme is still there. Flipping over an objection token, you shout objection at the opponent. Doing a sidebar, you're like, judge, you know, I need to talk to you about something. That's all interesting to me. And you got to figure out, how am I going to use the different cards in this game? Am I going to play a card... When I, you know, am I going to use it for its action? Or am I going to play a card here to add a bunch of points to my side in this witness? Or do I see that you're probably going to win this witness? So I might save that card and play it at a different time. Now, there's not a whole lot of reason to save cards to the next time, usually. That will happen a few times. So it's more about the order you play the cards. Or if I play this card, which is, I mean, sometimes there's cards, for example, in the first one with the forging, there are paintings. They're worth five. They're evidence. They're going to really make that influence on the witness go up, but they only have one symbol on them. So I can match them to another card, but then it's difficult to get other cards to work off of them. Some cards are better when they're the last card you play, or you want to play other cards on top of them. And I think this it just plays out so well in that regard. They're back and forth trying to figure out which jurors to sway. I guess I wouldn't mind if the jurors had faces. I could feel like I was getting more involved in that. And I will say the murder trial seems a bit more exciting than the painting one, although I like the painting one just because the evidence of paintings is fascinating. I, again, I feel like some people might be misled. You come in and go, only two cases. I mean, and you can buy a couple more cases. I have not played them as of this time, but there's the Godfather and the witch trial. And the witch trial, there's like a mob, and you don't want your witnesses getting killed. So they add some, some things to the game, but you don't need to. Like I said, you could play case zero only multiple times, and even then, even that case is a short two mediums and a long game. As, as far as I can tell, though, they just make the game longer. I'm pretty happy with the medium games myself. The short is fine, but the medium adds just a bit more time to go back and forth. Uh, with a short game, one person can steamroll and possibly make it difficult for the other person to come back. But again, I could play with just case 0-0 zero, zero over and over again because that's the game. The different cases kind of bring other things in. You know, just different mechanisms, slight different ways that you're playing different new cards. You're still using the same prosecution and defense deck with some other cards thrown into the mix. It's fun. Even though I said the theme isn't amazingly strong, it's still there, and I like the back and forth. My wife and I enjoyed this. Uh, we got into the theme a little bit. We also were able to, you know, it was a nice seesaw of a game. That's what I like a two-player game to be, where I'm pulling, and then you pull back, and I'm pulling on this rope, but you might be pulling on that one. And that's what this feels like. Um, the, I mean, it has potential to add more cases to it, obviously, and even that with the Godfather and the Witch Trials, that's a different kind of case. So there's a lot of potential, but even if this is all I got, I think it's worth it. It's a small box, but there's a lot inside. Cool theme. Mechanisms that I'm not sure are, like, brand new. I've definitely seen card matching symbols before, and I've definitely, you know, 
have these different tracks where you fight over stuff. But this combo, plus the objections, I think makes for a tense game where even though, like I said, the stream isn't strong, it still is there. And it's one I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people. An enjoyable game. Lawyer up. I recommend it. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching a Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved.